Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another amazing session on the social media platform of Greenman Institute and Radio Dawn 107.6 FM. I am Nasser Hussain, your host for today, Radio Dawn 107.6 FM, Nottingham Station Manager and we are really excited for what we've got in store for you guys today. Now just to ask you guys, if you watch Netflix that is, what is your favourite programme that you watch on Netflix? Or favourite season or anything. Do you remember Man Like Mobin? With Guz Khan and his crew? That was definitely one of my favourites. Now what I'm really excited about, and I'm chuffed, or should I say, if we've got a special person in today to be interviewed. He so took time out just for me and you guys out there. Do you remember the character 8 from Man Like Mobin? He was funny, wasn't he? He's absolutely brilliant. I loved him. You know what? It was a shame when he got shot at the end of that season 1. I don't know, did he die, did he not die? We are going to find out. Please welcome brother Tez Ilyas from Man Like Mobin, mashallah. He's really busy, but he's come on today just for us. Brother Tez, how are you? Asalaamu As Alaikum, Nasser. Thank you so much for having me. What an introduction. <laughs> My favourite Netflix show is Squid Games, isn't it? But I love that some people just man like Mobin. That's, uh, that's amazing. You know what it is, you know, I was thinking, shall I, should I watch it, should I not watch it, right? My kids watched it, we absolutely loved it. And I asked them all, who was your favourite character? And my, you know, my youngest son, he's 10 years old, and he said, you know, it's my favourite character, he's wicked. He's wicked. He's wicked. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, bro, thank you very much for taking time out today. I'm absolutely honoured that, you know, you took time out, especially for us, Marshall. It's amazing. A lot of people in our community have actually been looking forward to something like this. And I'm really honoured that you, you took time out for us. Bro, before we continue on with the amazing things that you've achieved so far and are going to achieve, we really what we want to know is the man behind eight. I know I'm saying eight, I know you've done other things as well, but I remember you by eight. So tell us about you know growing up, what was, life was like and how you got into up into um comedy and stuff. Because you're mashallah, you're a British Muslim Pakistani stand-up comedian and actor. Mashallah, we don't have many of them in the UK. Well, thank you. What an amazing build-up that is. I don't know if I'm worthy, but mashallah, nazar nala get two, two, two. So I grew up in Blackburn, uh, up north in Lancashire. You know, just humble, working-class, up and up backgrounds. Uh, you know how it goes, like dad drove taxis, mum was a housewife, that sort of thing. You know, went to a rough high school. There were more fights than GCSEs in those high schools, you know what I mean? One of them ones there. Um, after that, went to college. Didn't do that well in my A-levels, but ended up getting lucky and through cleaving, I got to Lancaster University, one of the best unis in the country. And from there, I got my degree in biochemistry, got a master's in management, went down to London after that for work. And then it's, I was looking for a hobby. I'm in my 20s now, mid 20s, mid to late 20s, looking for a hobby. And I just, I to say, kismet, whatever you want to call it, I came across stand-up comedy. And I thought, oh, my boys always tell me that I'm funny. I believe them in it because I'm deluded. So I thought, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's give that a go. And that was like 11 years ago now, mashallah, like gone mashallah. in a blink of an eye. Um, and yeah, here we are now, 11 years ago, chatting to you, brother. So it's been an amazing journey. Mainly I did stand up and then I got into the acting a little bit later. And that's when I got opportunities to be in like Man Like Mobile and stuff like that. But mashallah. yeah, man, alhamdulillah, it's been, it's, been, it's been amazing. And it's quite surreal that from my yeah. background that I've been able to do the things that I get to do. Yeah. Now, touching about, uh, you mentioned background and you mentioned school. Let's start with school first. You said it was like a rough school and fights and stuff. You can see that in Man Like Mabin. You can see a bit of that, you know, the rough up and you know, the rough uh, gangsters, the Pakistani gangsters and stuff. So it's interesting you mentioned that, that, you know, your school that you went to was rough, but something you're doing later on in life in terms, is actually showing that. So where was, where was that actually shot, Man Like Mabin? Which city? So Man Like Mabin is in Birmingham. Mm. So Guz, obviously, it's, his sh it's Guz's show. Guz yeah. is from Cov, but he has a lot of friends and connections in Birmingham. And the yeah. character Mabin that Guz created is based yeah. in Birmingham, the character. Mm. Uh, so yeah, the show, the show is shot in Small Heath in Birmingham and it's kind of showing inner city life. And, but obviously if you come from a place like Birmingham or Coventry yeah. or, or Bradford, yeah. Manchester, yeah. parts of London, Blackburn, yeah. you know, those of us who came from similar backgrounds, we had similar experiences. Uh, yeah. You know, our, school, our schools went through similar difficulties and stuff. So I think yeah. this is why a lot of people, it resonated with a lot mm. of people around the country. Yeah. We'll touch upon man like been in a short while, but just we were talking about you know you growing up in this country and experiences and things. Did you ever think comedy acting would be it? And coming from a Pakistani background, were your parents approve? You know, did they approve of it? Never growing up, bro, did I think that I would end up doing this? 
you know, we, we, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to be a doctor and, you know, my cousin became a solicitor and another cousin became my younger brother's a doctor. So, you know, we, 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 we had those sort of stereotypical, you know, mm. dreams and aspirations to be the things that everyone thinks you should be. And then comedy came along by accident. You know, it wasn't something that I designed. It wasn't something that I had ambitions to do. It just came back, you know, it was in my Christmas to do it. And I ended up in this career the way, the way I have done. And, but yeah, parents initially, yeah, they were skeptical. They were like, I don't know, son, if that's the right thing to be doing. I don't know about all that. But once the success started coming, <clears throat> once I started getting bigger and better gigs and BBC, you know, I was on the BBC and things like that, then they kind of softened a bit. You know, like yeah. people from outside, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. really proud of your son, <laughs> really like how he represents the community. We like what he's done. Then your parents can be like, oh, okay, if they're saying it's good, then they must be all right, innit? Yeah. So, you know, our parents, sometimes they care more about what other people think, innit? So, so you must have started in comedy and acting, and he goes, Putter se kam lor, kya kam yeah, yeah. I had a proper <laughs> job anyway. I had a proper job yeah. in, in London. That's what I took oh, to London, my proper job. Okay. And Fantastic. so comedy was like a hobby on the side. And eventually, over time, it overtook my main job and it became, that, then that became my main job. And so I quit my, I quit my day job, moved back home. I think they were happy about that. I, yeah. think, I think that kind of made them happy that I was at least I'd moved back home on that. So they didn't mind the comedy so much then, I think. No, fantastic. Absolutely amazing. So what's life like now? Now that obviously you've done some hit Netflix series and you've achieved a few things. How about, how is it going out in the streets of Blackburn? And well, stuff it's like? the same, bro. It just obviously, it? people are a lot nicer than that. And obviously yeah. people, people recognise me and they're really nice and they say nice things. And, you know, they here and there, selfie, selfie. Here and there, if they, if the owner, if, yeah, if the owner of a takeaway or a restaurant yeah. recognise you, they want to give you a free meal, which is very embarrassing and things like that. But but but, but otherwise, things for me are normal, bro. You know, I, I, I'm in the same area that I grew up in when I was a kid. Awesome. I have the same friends uh, that I grew up with. I play football with the same boys that I grew up with when I was when I was a teenager. Yeah. So in terms of that, in terms of my life in Blackburn, it's very much the same as it was before. Just a little bit more. Is it going to leave the house, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but otherwise it's the same yeah. and and even when Marcella, I go out and about fantastic. people are surprised they're like oh have you not got an entourage are you, are you, are you I'm like I'm just on my, I do stand up comedy man it's a one man band you don't need a big entourage I'm just on my own innit yeah. so I go to gigs to gigs on my own now and again like a friend might want to come with but most of the time I'm on my own yeah. people would be surprised about that but I'm like nah man, I'm, just, I'm just a simple guy so before Man Like Mabin because obviously that's where I've seen you first time as Man Like Mabin but in terms of before that the build up to Man Like Mabin what kind of things did you do? Stand-up comedy, bro, mainly. That's what I do. Even the tour that we're going to talk about a bit later is, is stand-up. That was my bread and butter. That's how I started in this in this world, doing being on stage, telling jokes in front of people, you know, who come to to watch. Um, so that's really what I'm known for. Uh, and then when Man Like Mobin happened, then that a lot of people kind of really enjoyed that. And yeah. because they hadn't seen me, because I was kind of not main, not, not I was mainstream, but I mean, as in I wasn't like famous stand-up comedian. Yeah. They thought that's where they thought that I started. But no, my journey started way before that. So your audience after Man Like Bean clearly must be much bigger now in terms of your stand-up. Yeah, yeah. So I'm always grateful for it because it's allowed me to reach a lot more people than I could have done on my own. Yeah. So in terms of Man Like Bean, let's touch on Man Like Me Bean now. How did you get into that? How um, Did anyone approach you? Or, yeah, you yeah. So, so me and Gus met about a year before he was thinking about it. And we just got on really, really well. Um, and then we made a little thing that I made for Sky called Tez, Tez Ilyas's Christmas. And it's mm. about these two brothers who own a shisha cafe and one of them wants to turn it into a Christmas theme and the other one doesn't um, and so we have a little bit of a fight about it so that was a little comedy thing that we did for Sky yeah. yeah. Um, and so people enjoyed that who watched it and then when he got a chance to make Man Like Mobin then he put me in that and that was for the pilot um, and then people really enjoyed that the BBC enjoyed it so they made it into a full series and then I ended up becoming eight in when they, when they did the full series uh, and the big show I ended up becoming eight uh, and they kept me on uh, and so yeah, that's how I got into that because of my connections with Gus. And I didn't know him before comedy, but mm. we got to know each other and we got on really, really well. And there's not a lot of people from our background in this industry. So when we met each other, we had that shorthand that Pakistanis have with each other. Mm. Yeah, you might as well be my cousin in it. The way we could speak to each other, and <laughs> similar yeah. kind of background and similar kind of family yeah. life and stuff like that. So we just get on really, really well. And we thought we just gotta when we can, we gotta try and work with each other. Okay, the next answer to my question will either make us sad or happy. Right. Now, we've got a kind of idea, but I need to, you to confirm it. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Don't say that. Sorry, sorry for any spoilers, because some people might not even have seen it, but that's your own fault. It's been out for 18 months. But yeah, I'm dead. No, because he, he, uh, Gus had the... Um, yeah, the chain. Yeah, so I wasn't sure if, if it actually had happened kind of thing. 
Yeah, he wouldn't be no. wearing the chain if I was alive, innit? Oh, I mean, that's that was it, like yeah. In my memory, he was like, my yeah. Back in like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Mariga. Oh, so is there going to be season two, do you know, by any chance? Um, well, funnily enough, that's season three, bro. No, so, sorry. <laughs> so season four would be the next one. I mean, the next one, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three. So BBC have commissioned a new season. Yeah. But I, I know Gus is very busy, so I don't know when... He's yeah. gonna get time to write it or whatever what his plan. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah, I guess when he's got something to announce, he let people know. Fantastic. So we want to talk about your tour, but we're gonna leave that at the end. I just want to talk about something else that you actually do. There's a Channel Four program called Wicked O'Clock Show or something, isn't it? Tesla Clock Show. Tesla Clock. What's that about? Tell me that. So the, te- the Tesla Clock Show. We did that for Channel Four a couple of years ago, 2019, before the pandemic and all that. Right. And it was a topical show, bro, about you know covering the news on politics and making jokes mm. out of that. And it was really, really fun. I was on there with Sindhu V. Goes did some sketches. Adam Rowe was on there. Sophie Willen was on there. We got Jason Manford on there. John Bishop. Saida Wasi. It was just, it was a lot of fun. In front of a live audience. Yeah. Uh, it was just a lot of fun, bro. We just, we did, we did these like three shows and it was really, really good fun. Is that something that's going to continue? We don't know, bro. Because like, obviously, since the pandemic, things have changed. And yeah, of course. Yeah. Four don't have enough money. And the people who liked yeah. your show, they moved on to other jobs. So you're dealing with new people. Yeah. So whatever's in our guest month will happen, bro. But I'm really grateful and thankful to Allah that I got to make those three episodes at least. Uh, and they'll just live there forever. Forever, I can say I did that. I made that. And people really enjoyed it. So if you want to watch that, it's on all four. Uh, which is Channel 4's equivalent of iPlayer, and so they're available to watch. And I would I would encourage people to watch it because they were really, really fun. Yeah, because we're actually planning on watching um, uh, Man Like Mabin again, because now that you told me, you, now that you told me you're dead, and we want to just watch it again just to relive the, you know, the whole thing. It's absolutely fantastic. So let's let's go on to your um, current project, which is The Wicked Tour. The Wicked now, Tour. Now, why is it called Wicked? Because that's my catchphrase, isn't it? Right. And I want people to have a wicked time. Right. Uh, when they come out to watch and have a wicked laugh and that. So, so yeah, I thought it'd be quite a good name. And also because people who don't know me as Tez Elias and my stand-up, but know yeah. me from Man Like Mobin as eight, mm. then when they see Vicky, they'll be able to realise, oh, that's that guy. And yeah, then yeah. like, yeah, we want to go see him. Otherwise, if they just see my name, they, they might not instantly realise that's who yeah. I am. So that's why, yeah. I mean, it would have been great to get you on before your tour started, but like you mentioned, you're nearly at the end of your tour. Now, we've got you before Nottingham, because obviously this, show, uh, this interview is happening in Nottingham, and your next show is, well, in Not- your first show in Nottingham is the 25th of November. Yeah, so next Thursday, I'm in Nottingham. Uh, really looking forward to it. It should be really, really fun. It's at the Glee Club. Uh, so there's a few tickets left. There's like 30, 40 tickets left. Uh, so they're nearly all gone. So I would encourage you to get your Birmingham the night before. That's completely sold out. I, did two, I had to do two shows in Derby uh, two months ago because they com- one completely sold out. So we had to put a second one on. That sold out as well. So we've done two Derby shows. We've done the Birmingham show sold out. We did Warwick Art Centre near Coventry. That sold out. Wow. Leicester sold Fantastic. out. So we got Nottingham. We've got a few more tickets left. So let's make sure that's sold out as well. And then I've got then I've got London, Blackburn and Manchester left after that. Inshallah. So all those guys are from Nottingham that are actually tuned in today, Oh, and we'll listen to the radio show. Definitely do check your show out. You need to book the tickets. You know what? I've got to go down. 34 tickets, you made me happy now. I'm getting my whole family going down now. There's not a lot left, bro. They'll go very quickly <laughs> once people realise. So yeah, come down, bring the family. Well, don't bring anyone that yeah. you'd be embarrassed to sit next to if any right. kind of little... Because it's, it's adult comedy, in it, bro? Adult comedy. No, of course, yeah. Anyone that you'd be like... So don't bring yeah. your mum in it, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you want to bring boys or whatever like that. That's, sure. that's the problem. And I have to say, it's 16 plus. So don't be bringing no, don't be bringing no 10 year olds to the show. It's not no, no, no. eight like man like Mobin is not that. So it's a good laugh, but it, it is for it is for 16 plus. Yeah. May Allah give you all the success. It's absolutely fantastic. You know what is we, we need someone like I, I know it's easy saying it now, but we really need someone like yourself who's actually you know stuck by his guns and went through with it. Because I know there's a lot of criticism from our background, it's the Indian subcontinent, where they say, you know, this isn't this isn't where you should be. You should be doing being a doctor, a lawyer, like you mentioned. So the fact that, you know, you've gone into comedy and acting, I think you're helping promote something in a way which people know that, you know, if there's something you're passionate about, you can achieve your goals, you know, you can achieve your dreams. It's not one way, it actually opens up another world in front of you. And I think you're a fantastic role model for that. If I was, if I went back in my younger days, I'd just follow your footsteps, man, because it's wicked, man. Keep me near the walls, innit? Make sure there's no nazar on me. So that's what I yeah, can I mean, I mean, Masha, you know, your tour's nearly ending. The 25th of November is your event here in Nottingham. 
But once this is over, is this an annual tour that you do, a wicked tour, or is this a, you know, one-off? Or Probably do. This is my third national tour. Obviously, each one is bigger than the last, so yeah. hopefully I'll tour again probably probably in two years now, because it takes a while to get the material ready, because I've been on stage for like an hour and a half, yeah. and to have that amount of material ready that works, that you know is going to make people laugh, it takes a little bit of a while to construct that. So I'll yeah. probably be back after this tour, probably in two years' time. But in between now and then, I'm gigging all the time. I'm on the mainstream comedy circuit. So anyone who goes to comedy clubs anywhere in the country, I, you know, I'd be at those same clubs. Uh, so I'd be in London, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, probably Nottingham Glee Club as well. Um, so, so, so I'd be around. So as Johnny said, you might see me at some comedy club if you book it with your boys or your girls or whatever. Yeah. If you, whoever, whoever comes out. So, so I'd be busy. And then obviously, you know, whatever TV projects, radio projects come my way, inshallah, I'll want to take opportunities of the, take advantage of those opportunities as well. So, so yeah, definitely, bro. You'll, you'll be, inshallah, seeing a lot more of me in the future. Inshallah. I was going to ask you, because obviously I know you're doing stand-up, that's your main thing, but I was going to ask you if there's any acting or anything that's coming up on TV that we can be prepared for. Uh, nothing I can talk about right now. Okay. Uh, so until I'm always like that, like, until it happens, yeah. until you're shooting it, until it's on TV, I don't like to talk about it. So there's something there, but you're not telling us. Working <laughs> on things in the background, uh, sure. but you, there's no guarantees in this business until until it happens. No, that's fantastic. You know what? We really hope at some point you get a chance to come down to our radio station here in uh, Nottingham and we'll do a live with you here. It'd be fantastic. And we really do appreciate you, you know, you're taking time out today for this. It's, it's an honour for us. And it's great to see that there's somebody that, you know, we can look up to in the community as well that, you know, is someone as a role model for our youngs, especially the way that the world's going at the moment and the, the life that the people are going down especially after covid to have something to look forward to an inspiration role model to know that you know you can achieve your dreams it doesn't just have to be the usual go to university do it but someone like you who's been to university had a job and packed that up and went into something that he's really passionate about and he's achieved success in it that's absolutely fantastic thank you bro thank you so much that's very brother much you keep you. us in your doors as well i will look forward inshallah. to seeing you again soon inshallah, inshallah. i take it and no no doubt we'll see you on the 25th maybe we'll get a, a backstage um a special thing where we can see you for five minutes or something. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, and, and I, I do meet, I, I also do meet yeah. and greets after every single oh, show. Fantastic. So there'll definitely be opportunity to say hi, take a selfie, and, you know, maybe go for some food afterwards if, if places are open in Nottingham. Just a quick thing, though. You know, Marcia, there's a lot of comedians, especially non-Muslims around the world, especially like American stuff. Was there any uh, specific person that comes in mind in terms of that you looked up towards when you went into this kind of field? I thought, you know, this is what I want to be like or anything like that. An inspiration? I just love comedy, bro. Like, there's there so many Fantastic. people. I love Peter Kay, Michael McIntyre, Stuart Lee, Sarah Millican, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy. Um, Russell Peters, uh, mm. Sarah Silverman, all these people I really looked up to. Even if you look at Bollywood and people like Johnny yeah. Lever and yeah, Father yeah. Han and people, like, they were really funny and really good, funny mm. actors. So the lot of people, I, I took my inspiration from a lot of different people. I can't just say it was one person or something. Even writers like Chris Morris who wrote Four Lions, what a don, like, you know, what an amazing yeah. thing to do. Yeah. So yeah, I took my inspiration from a lot of different places. Yeah. They're fantastic. So all these guys that are listening today and will be tuning in at a later stage to watch this uh, repeat of this, Please do book your tickets for the 25th. Uh, Ted said there's only about 30, 40 tickets left, so you need to be on it ASAP. I think it's via the website, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, Tez Ilyas, just my name, tezilyas.com, and you'll find all the dates on there. So if you're watching this anywhere else in the country, there's a few tickets left in Manchester. Um, I'm in York tomorrow, so there's some tickets left there if you're in the Bradford, because I'm in Bradford okay. on Saturday, but it's completely okay, sold out. So if, you, if you're in that area and you want, you want to see me, I'm in York on Friday. I'm in Manchester, got two days in Manchester, Blackburn sold out. And then I've got a few tickets left in London next Friday as well. So there's a few opportunities left to come see me. Uh, but yeah, the ticket, the show's going to, the tour ends next Sunday. So uh, get, get, get skates on. And if, if people want to stay up to date with what you're doing, follow you on Insta. Yeah? yeah, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Yeah. Fantastic, bro. Tez, thank you very much for joining us today. And no doubt we'll see you again. Inshallah. Thank you, brother. Take care. Bro, take care. Wa alaikum